It only takes a careless moment to turn this into this. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Hello, happy 4th of July from Smoke Daddy Inc. and Pella Pro Grill. Uh, yeah, I did a brisket uh, last night uh, for our 4th of July party. And I just want to show you guys how to maintain your uh, pellet grills. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of uh, talk, you know, people not cleaning them properly, uh, catching on fire. But here, I want to, I, I already pulled everything out of here. Uh, this was a, a little over a 12 hours cook. As you can see, this is the way that it should look in the bottom. You know, the ashes, uh, not, a, not a lot of ash build up. You don't see a lot of grease uh, pooling in the bottom. If you come across where you're getting grease in the bottom of this thing, you're gonna catch it on fire. So uh, we always recommend, here's the drip pan that was in there overnight. And uh, you can see there's not a lot of grease on there, just a little bit. One of the things I like to do is make sure when you're cooking something, it has a lot of fat or whatever, uh, have aluminum pan underneath it to catch all that rendering fat. Uh, the other thing is you put your briskets, pork shoulders, don't cram it in there uh, where it's over overextending this drip pan because the grease is going to drip on the sides. Get down in there, mix it with the ash, and again, uh, catch it on fire. Uh, I want to show you somebody sent me a, a grill that he had problems with. Now that's a, somebody was not maintaining their grill properly with that. Now, another thing I don't like doing is putting aluminum foil on here because that has a potential to catch the grease. Now, what I would do with this one, I would just scrape this all off, you know, if there's any excess. Now, again, this, yeah, this guy, I don't know. But yeah, don't let your drip pan or the inside of your pellet grill get like that. I do recommend every time you start it to make sure you look in there, make sure you, there's no grease built up or a lot of ash uh, in there. So uh, with that cook, I did use our heavy D stick burner. We put some nice, nice big chunks of wood. Now, the other thing I recommend is one nice big hunk like that on either side. You put a lot of small stuff in there, again, you, you can catch it on fire. So some chunks like that, even soaked in some water, uh, works out really well. Uh, yeah, the Heavy D, it works good, you know, up to about 220, 250 or so. You start bringing it up to 375, you know, you may catch those hunks of wood on fire too. So another thing I wanna talk about is your pellets, uh, keeping the pellets. Uh, nice and dry. Uh, another thing, if your pellets have moisture in them, they may not burn uh, quite efficiently enough. Uh, one of the things, uh, especially if, you, if you're storing your pellets in here uh, for a long period of time, uh, you know, it, I always like to try to keep a, an eye on what the percentage of humidity is in here. Anything under 50%, I think is fine. If it gets above that, you know the pellets start to degrade and they have a hard time uh, burning. Uh, I've been putting uh, one of these little, I forget exactly what they call it, but it helps pull the moisture out. Uh, so I've been putting some of those in there, just, especially if I'm not in that, if I'm storing it for any length of time. So again, you know, let's have a safe uh, 4th of July and uh, always uh, be mindful of your pellet grills and uh, as they, the grease, you know, uh, that could be a potential fire hazard. So thanks for looking. Go start cooking.